Let's look at how stock cards are completed using FIFO. So, for example, JB HiFi has a Sony TV inventory item which it sells to customers. And um, how would it use a stock card and FIFO to do that? So, let's say on the 1st of July, the only balance of stock was five units and they were valued at $180 each. So, we start with the details, which is the, the date, 1st of July. The reference is uh, balance and then we go all the way over to the balance column and we say the opening balance was five units at 180 for a total of $900. The next thing that happened was on July the 2nd we purchased 10 units on credit invoice 843 for $190 each plus GST. So we've got the date 2nd of July, we've got the invoice 843, we've got 10 units coming in at 190 for a total of 9800. So note we're only using the cost prices in the stock car, we didn't worry about the GST, we're just interested in the actual cost amount here. And then over in the balance column we're listing things in FIFO order. So we're rewriting the previous day's total of 5 units at 180. And underneath that, we're going to put the next uh, lot of stock that was in, which was the 10 units at 190. Uh, the next day, a customer came in and we sold two units for cash for $300 each plus GST. So we can see here the sale was for $300 each. We've got two lots of stock to choose from. The stock card's only going to record the cost price, so that's all I'm interested in. So this actual number up here of $300 is kind of there to fool you. It doesn't need to get recorded anywhere in the stock card. We can leave it out. So what we're going to do is assume first in, first out. So the first uh, units that were in there were the $180 units. So if two leave the business, they must be two units at 180 for a total of 360, and that'll go on the out column. And you can see that'll leave now. If we had five the day before, we sold two, that must leave three at 180 for a total of 540. We then have a transaction where we sell five units on invoice 101 and they were sold for $280 each plus GST. Again, the 280 is not relevant for the stock card. What I'm interested in is I've sold five units and here's my current balance. Uh, we've got three at 180, 10 at 190. So I'm going to assume that the first three units must have been $180 and then the next two units of the five must have come at 190. So I will assume in my out column that I've got three at 180 and two at 190. And that'll need uh, an updated balance here. So I had that many left. I had 13. I've lost five and that'll leave the eight at 190 for $1,520. Then we sold three units for cash for $330 including GST. So first in, first out. And you can see the only items here that are left on hand are the $190 units. So if the, there's no $180 units on hand, I don't worry about applying FIFO to those. It's just what I have on hand at the moment. So out, we've got three units at 190 and that leaves five at 190 for a total of 950. Uh, we then on July the 6th bought 10 units for a total of 170 each. So we've got six, uh, sorry, on the 6th invoice 877 in 10 units at 170 for a total of 7800. That leaves a final balance. We've got the first in units of five at 190 for 950 and they're on top. And then underneath we list the next in which were 10 at 170 for a total of 1700. Lastly, we sold six more units. So again, our assumption is that the first five must have come from this pile here. And once they're gone, we'll need to take one from this pile here. They'll go on the out column because stock is leaving the business and that leaves a balance of nine units at 170 for $1530. Looking at the debits and credits and how this all matches up to the ledger. So you can see the opening balance is $900. That came from the balance column. We've got the INS. So the INS will be debits because INS makes stock control go up. And when an asset goes up, that's a debit. The OUTS will be credits because OUTS reduce stock. That's stock leaving the business. 
And then the final balance, you can see will be 2440. If I balance that ledger out, I get a closing balance of 2440. That's simply equal to the final value in the balance column.